Hi, I'm Scott Ruthven. I'm a landscape ar uh, landscape architect. <laughs> Hi, I'm Scott Ruthven. I'm a landscape artist in Colorado. And today I'm going to share with you a little bit about the sketchbook I carry and the pens and pencils that I bring with me when I travel and anytime I have my sketchbook with me. Um, sketchbooks are so important. They give you give an artist the uh, ability to capture things quickly as they see them in, in real life. You can work out a lot of ideas for for paintings or larger pieces that you want to do. But uh, it's a great habit to have to carry your sketchbook around and to always be sketching. So let me share with you what works for me, what I carry and why. And uh, hopefully that'll encourage you to start carrying a sketchbook for yourself. So here's an overview of the my different drawing materials that I carry with me. This is my sketchbook I always like to have with me. It's uh, by Handmade, and uh, it's got a cloth cover on it, and it's maybe uh, five by nine inches. This has been all over the world with me. In fact, I like to put little stamps and stuff on it. You know, I feel like the sketchbook is really a, a personal thing and not only do I use it to sketch in but I'll collect little things. I went to Japan recently and got one of these origami um, just various things. I'll keep receipts and various things that I pick up along the way just as kind of a almost a diary too uh, but the main purpose is sketching. Uh, it's got really uh, nice paper to sketch with and I'll put some stills in here of some of my sketches in a minute. So this thing, you know, it has an enclosure on it, elastic enclosure, and really just goes everywhere. It looks a little stained in that, but who cares? These are my Copic or Copic markers I like to have, especially if I'm out doing plein air painting. Uh, I will use these and you can see here that uh, they come in a host of different um, tints. Basically, the N stands for neutral, so it's a neutral gray. And I carry the 1, the 3, the 5, and the 6. Uh, plus, I have a Sharpie, which is my black. And in the middle there, which you can't really see, is a, um, a, a waterproof ink, basically a, a fine art pen, fine liner. Um, so I, And they're all just bound together with this... This is actually a photography hack. Uh, I can't remember the name of these, but this little elastic band in the enclosure. Uh, a lot of photographers will use this to tie cables together and, and tie things up out of the way, but they're inexpensive and it's a good way to keep my markers together. Um, let's see, first sketchbook here is a, another one by the, the marker company, Copic. And uh, the reason it's important to have, um, and this is brand new, I don't have anything in it yet, but this paper is bleed proof. So um, one thing that is no fun is when you do a good drawing on one page, and I tend to draw on the backs as well, and then you do a marker drawing on the back, it seeps through and ruins the, the uh, drawing or whatever you had on the other sheet. So um, I bought this pad here just for my value studies, and we'll... Um, you know, just use it for uh, a couple of drawings, you know, per page, quick thumbnails of uh, value using my markers. And I'll do that as a preparation for a painting, if I'm painting plein air especially. Um, it really helps to, you know, just take a few minutes and do a quick value study, get the big shapes, kind of understand the composition of what you're looking at before you dive in and start painting. I know it's difficult. You want to jump in and start painting right away. But I promise you, if you take just a couple of minutes and do a value sketch, your plein air piece will be stronger. Uh, and lastly, I have this little case here. This is pretty new to me as well. Um, it's a pencil case, and I like it because it's got a little um, button here, snap, to close the, um, the enclosure, the zipper. And that's handy. Um, not that it would really ever open, but that's kind of nice. I've got a whole host of drawing implements in here, more than I need, but it's nice to just have a little case, and since it can hold all the materials in here, why not bring them around, right? So I have a couple of pencils here, a 5B and a 6B, and you'll notice that uh, as you get to the 6B, the actual lead is a little bit thicker. It's probably because it's softer and a little easier to break. 
than the 5B, and that varies by brand. I've also got some um, Conte-based uh, pencils here, another fine liner that's waterproof ink black, another Conte uh, 2B, these are made in France. I also have um, a, a white china marker, so this would be useful for putting highlights on. And uh, something new I've not really figured out yet, but it's a it's a piece of charcoal. And um, as you wear it down, you can use the string to to remove the uh, the paper and get more charcoal. So um, that's a good way to carry charcoal in something like this and not risk it getting broken as easy. A uh, couple of other Conte um, pieces here, sanguine and uh, uh, black. And then um, another pencil. What is this one here? Oh, it's more of a, it's a carbon, piece of carbon. So more like a charcoal feel to it. A little bit scratchy as you're, you're scratching the surface. Uh, another white for highlights. And uh, just another pencil here. This is actually one that is water soluble. I don't really use it very much, but um, it's graphite made in Germany. And then once you put it down, you can take a brush uh, uh, on it with a little bit of water and it will, will blend. So you get some neat effects there. And then this last piece here, I don't know, probably just a backup. Just looks like a regular 4B backup. You'll also notice that most of these are hand sharpened, which is important to get a, a long point that you can use, um, uh, you know, on the tip, which is usually how you're not drawing, but um, you can lay it on its side for a broader mark. Um, you can get some really fine lines using the edge of it as well. And that sharpening is just done with a straight edge razor blade. And I have my kneaded rubber eraser here as well. So uh, I, not only do I use the eraser, but it's a great way to protect the, uh, you know, myself from the blade or from anything getting cut up from the blade of my, my straight edge razor here. So um, I use that to sharpen the pencils and then um, usually would have a, a small piece of uh, sandpaper to just refine the tip uh, because they do break. And that's another thing, you know, in your sketch pad, it's good to have some multiple pencils that you like because uh, invariably you'll go out to sketch and the one you grab, you'll break the tip right away. That seems to be my luck. So everything in here, I've got pencils, charcoal, um, some really deep, you know, black marks, and I'll do... Some little, a little more video showing you the marks that each of these make. Um, and then pens as well. I like to draw a lot in pen. So that's my little pencil case. Not too expensive. And holds more than I need, really. So here's a few shots from my sketchbook. Like I said, I really like to take it when I travel because there's a lot of downtime and I may as well be uh, drawing. Uh, it's really a challenge for me to draw people. So I will go to a coffee shop, you know, just try and draw people as they walk on the street and as they're moving. It's very difficult, but it makes you kind of get to the essence of, of what they're doing. Uh, you know, and I, I think some of these I look back and I really think, wow, that's great. I really like how the, I got the legs in here um, and the action of that person and others. I just think, wow, that's horrible. But that's what it is, you know. Uh, so this is on Catalina, the casino in the bay there. Uh, just pen and ink. Um, Long Beach and the Queen Mary with that multicolored pen. Yeah, so here's a good example of how I use the um, the Copic marker. I was actually trying to get some ideas. I, I did do a, a plein air painting of this, the casino from across the bay in Avalon. And uh, use the markers just to... Uh, outline my uh, the subject but also fill in the value patterns there uh, this is another view looking across you get the uh, the cypress trees i think those are uh, just looking across the bay and at the the land masses as they kind of fade off in the distance with all the atmosphere uh, a boat you know just having that little bit of reference i don't know when i'll use it but maybe i need a boat and that's enough um, and that was really quick to do just with a you know, basically I did a ballpoint, or not a ballpoint, but I used, uh, you know, one of these fine liner pens here. This is made in Japan, I think. 
Uh, if you're ever in Japan, they make great pens. I always load up. Um, but this is a Sakura Micron. But um, anyway, doing a quick line draw with that and then just adding a little bit of swath of value with the marker really defines that volume. Another building there. And a few more boats. But see, you can see here where my drawings on the other page seeped through and that new um, marker paper should keep that from happening. More people. Uh, some rubbings. That's kind of fun, too. Uh, this was in Munich, Germany. We saw, um, I don't know, there were old headstones, basically, that were mounted outside of a, a cathedral. And I thought that was kind of cool, July 1776. So I did a little rubbing. Um, Paris. And, you know, you don't always have time to finish things. In fact, a lot of them you don't. It has a little uh, study in... Uh, Reykjavik, Iceland. I'm going to get a little drawing of my daughter's face that I ruined with another pen drawing on the back. <laughs> Darn it. Uh, planning out. Uh, so here's an example of actually planning a drawing. I did this before uh, painting a piece plein air in Rocky Mountain National Park. Uh, another one. I never did paint this, but it gave me, you know, some ideas. Maybe that'll be a future painting or reference for something. And same thing there. So just various things. Um, sometimes just those were some pomegranates. And they were under like three or four different light sources. So I thought that the pattern of um, shadow was actually more interesting than the pomegranates. Good way to kill time. I went to Japan recently. This was a hand study in a museum piece that I saw. So I was able to capture a little bit more about that artist. And, uh, you know, stupid little things like my caramel macchiato sticker. Uh, this was another painting that I saw in a um, exhibit there at the university. And uh, so I just did a study of that. And that's it. I hope this video was helpful for you. Don't forget to look for part two. I'll teach you how to sharpen with that razor blade. And I'll actually go through each of the pencils and make some marks with those so you see how they perform. If you like this video, head over to my channel. I've got even more over there. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. Thanks.